Hi there, my name's Ian, I'm a PhD student at Sheffield Hallam University and this is episode 7 in a brief series of videos I'm producing designed to help those of us who need to produce extended documents like theses and dissertations and who are using Microsoft Word in order to do so. In this episode we're going to take a look at internal signposting to images. In the previous episode, episode 6, we looked at internal signposting more generally. That's where you tend to use phrases like um, in section X I will discuss that and it points to somewhere else within the thesis. Well, you, we tend to do a similar thing using the phraseology like uh, figure X shows that and so forth. So we can use a similar technique to the one in the previous video to make that signposting um, automatic, at least partially automatic, uh, and internal con internally consistent. So if you make a change to the number of figures, then if you had manually signposted or referenced all of those figures, then you would need to change each of those internal signposts manually by using this technique that we're going to look at today um, you would be able to update all of those internal references across the whole document in one go so let's take a look at how that this is going to work so first of all I need a figure or two and I think I've got some in here yep so there we are we've got a figure not at the moment captioned. We talked about captioning in an earlier video. So if I right click on that, I can insert a caption. Um, you'll notice that it's picked up a caption tweet. Um, this is a thesis about Twitter after all. So I've chosen to add an additional label. Um, if we look at the options in um, the default version of Word, you will get equation, figure and table. Well, I've added an additional one by going new label and then putting in tweet as a new label. You can add as many as you want and you might have particular things in your thesis that you want to refer to that the labels equation or table or figure don't actually apply to. So that's a possibility. Uh, but here, this isn't a tweet, so I'm going to call it a figure. Uh, it's picked up the number one because this is the first one that's been labelled within this particular document. And I'm going to say OK. And there it is. We've also got, or I've put in um, a place marker for some internal signposting that I need to add later. I could at this point just type figure one. And that would be fine until somewhere else within the document before this, I add another figure. This will actually automatically change, but that's because that's been done using Word's captioning feature. That would become figure two. But this internal signpost that I made manually wouldn't change. So let's look at how we can make that a better process. To do that, we go to References tab and use Cross Reference, just the same as we did in the previous episode. Um, in the previous episode, we were using numbered items for each of the different um, chapter numbers and section numbers. But here, as you saw there, we want to pick up figure. There is only one at the moment, so it's pointing to that. I want the entire caption, in other words, figure and one. I don't just want the numbers, uh, as we did in the previous episode, for the section numbers. And I click Insert. So that manual entry, if I close that, has now, you can see it's been replaced. If I click on it, the grey highlighting indicates that this is a field code. In other words, it's a piece of underlying code that does some work uh, that can be subsequently updated by us, the authors. If I click there, you can see that's not grey. That indicates something different is in this position. Let's take a look at the second example. So if we want to internally signpost that, the first thing it will need is a caption. So we insert a caption. It's automatically picked up that this is the second figure within the document. At least the second one that's been labelled. Uh, we say OK. Now we look for the internal signposting that I used, which is just there. 
highlight that because I want to overwrite it. Go to the References tab, go to Cross Reference. Uh, this time I don't want it to point to figure one, although somewhere else within the thesis I might want to do that. And refer back to the previous diagram we were looking at. Click Figure 2, click Insert, it changes automatically. We close that, we notice that it um, is a field code. Okay, so what happens to these if there is somewhere earlier prior to these within the thesis that gets changed? So if I jump back to, yeah, there's one. This hasn't been captioned yet, so as far as the internal referencing is concerned, it doesn't exist. So let's first of all add a caption. Um, you'll notice that it, it's recognised the fact that this is earlier within the thesis, so this is the first figure that's been captioned at this point within the thesis. So we say OK, and it's captioned that, and I'm just going to have to, uh, my design sensibility won't let me look. There we go, centre justified. Now what's happened to those earlier, uh, sorry, the ones that we did earlier, but which come later in the thesis? If we jump back to them, we can see this has now become figure two. That's a great feature of Word, that it picks that up automatically. This one has become figure three. Unfortunately, these two internal signposts haven't yet updated. We need to just give them a nudge. And we do that by, <clears throat> well, there's a couple of ways. If I right click on that, I can update that one individually on its own. And there it goes, it's picked it up. But if, for example, I referred to this figure somewhere else within the thesis, that won't have picked up that automatic, uh, sorry, that update that I've just done there because I was only applying it here locally, not globally. So the way that you can do it across the whole thesis is firstly to select everything within the thesis. That's a control A shortcut for me on a Windows computer. And now if I do right click update field, um, and it's also picking up the fact that it's gonna update the tables of contents and figures as well. So I'll say entire table and say okay. And there we go, it's done it across the whole thesis, it's picked that one up, and it's also updated the table of contents. Although, to be fair, within there, there are no references to figures. That would come in the table of figures, which I've not put in yet. So let's do that. Um, put it on a new line, and go to references. Not the table of contents, this is a table of figures. And just as before with the table of contents, you've got various options. So I'm not going to be posting it to the web, so I don't need hyperlinks. I'll just leave the defaults, although you can change all those different things. There are options and modifications you can make. Um, uh, the caption label is figure, uh, although I could have a table of tweets if I labeled any tweets. So we can have separate tables for each of the different captions that we've used. We'll just stick with figure for the moment and say OK. And there it is, it's picked that up automatically. It's picked up the page numbers where those, um, uh, where those figures exist within the thesis. And you've got to agree, surely, that that is a much more efficient way of doing things than, as I saw a colleague doing recently, manually putting all of these different figures in. That's an incredibly time-consuming process, uh, which is saved by just adding those little captions. So if I now go to um, somewhere else within the thesis, let's jump to somewhere where I know there's a tweet and we can see how that's going to be labelled. It's a little bit later on than this. There we go. So that's a tweet and uh, let's say I want to label that and caption it rather using the tweet label that I produced earlier on. Um, right click, insert caption, I don't want it to be figure, and change that to tweet. And you'll notice it picks up the fact this is the first tweet that's been labeled within the thesis, that's been captioned rather. So I say, okay, it picks that up. And once again, I'm gonna to have to center justify it. There we go. And then if we go back to our tables of figures and tweets, uh, this is the table which picks up the figures. If I right click, and I update the field, um, sorry. 
if I add an extra table of tweaks this time. My fault. So go to references, go to insert table of figures. This time it's picked up the fact that the last thing I did was talk about tweaks. So rather than a table of figures, which we used last time, we'll have a table of tweaks. And if I say OK, and we've now got two separate tables. Um, one of figures, one of tweaks, each of which will update automatically. If we say right click, update, oh, I can't try that again, update field or control A across the whole thesis, and then right click, update field, and it will update all of those fields that we've inserted, all of those internal signposts, the tables of content, the tables of tweets, the tables of figures, all get updated automatically. And that hopefully ensures that you maintain consistency throughout your thesis. Any little internal signposts that you've put in, which um, are inserted using cross-references, all get updated at the same time. Hope that's been helpful, but if there's anything in there that you're not sure about, if there's any uh, queries that that's raised, if you have any questions about any of this, pop them in the comments box below uh, and I'll try to address them. If you've got any other um, ideas that I missed, I've got one or two more episodes coming out, then again, pop them in the comments. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next time.